Nitric acid is one of the most important acids in both organic and inorganic chemistry. It's part of the big three and is crucial for the synthesis of a uh, kaboonies such as TNT, nitroglycerin, and black powder. However, it's rather difficult to obtain due to nobody selling it commercially, so I'll be making mine from a chemical known as calcium ammonium nitrate, or CAN, which is found in fertilizer. For my fertilizer, I use this brand that apparently prevented blossoming end rods in tomatoes. However, the first problem arises when I pour out the fertilizer, as it contains many weird blue bits that are clearly impurities. I mean, all yellow chemistry is trash. But I can't assume blue chemistry will be much better, so I had to manually pick out the blue junk by hand. I added all the fertilizer, which came up to around 200 grams, into 250 mils of water and cranked up the stirring. As you can see, it's not perfectly clear, but if I hadn't taken the blue out, it would have been much worse. When I let it settle, there was some green junk caused by added cellulose, and I filtered that off. I then boiled it down to a bit less than 175 mils, which took way longer than it should have, and then I put it in the fridge. Unfortunately, it still didn't crystallize, which greatly confused me because only 50 of the 200 grams of can should still be dissolved. Then, I realized it must have super cooled, so I added a seed crystal, and lots of crystals appeared. I then vacuum filtered everything and put it into a vial, only to dissolve it up in some water once more and add in a generous amount of sodium carbonate solution. The sodium carbonate reacts with the calcium ammonium nitrate to form sodium nitrate, calcium carbonate, water, and ammonia. The ammonia causes toxic fumes, so I do this outside. When I hold a pre-wetted pH paper above the solution, you can see it turn green from the basic ammonia. I stop heating it when the green barely registers. After filtering the calcium carbonate off, I decided to see if there were still calcium ions in the solution by adding a few drops of it to a saturated sodium carbonate solution. Unfortunately, calcium carbonate precipitated out, so I panicked and added a huge excess of sodium carbonate solution to remove all the unwanted calcium. You see, the reason why I'm so concerned about calcium is that when I add sulfuric acid to make the nitric acid, the calcium will react to form calcium sulfate, which will irreversibly damage my flask. Anyway. Once I was finally sure all the calcium was removed from solution, I put everything in a crystallizing dish and evaporated it down. The idea here was to remove the sodium carbonate by letting it crystallize out while the sodium nitrate stayed in solution, but I decided to test if there was nitrate in the precipitate just in case. I did this by melting it with a blowtorch and then dipping some toilet paper into it. As you can see, the toilet paper rapidly oxidizes, indicating that there was indeed nitrate in the precipitate, so everything will go into the reaction. To finally make the reaction mix, I add 50 mils of concentrated sulfuric acid to 25 mils of water. Remember to always add acid to water, and never the other way around. Now, the next reaction produces horrible fumes, so I do the next part outside, where I promptly spill some of the white and lumpy nitrate carbonate mix on the ground. This will not be good for my yield. I then combine the two solutions together, which produces copious amounts of carbon dioxide from the carbonate reacting with the acid, which heats up the solution and also causes the nitrate to release nitrogen dioxide in the presence of the acid, which is a choking gas that you should never breathe in. When that hell finally ends, I switch out my funnel for a short path distiller and crank up the heating and stirring. I then tried to time lapse the distillation, but my phone died before anything even came over. Hello everyone, so uh, my camera kinda ran out of battery. Well, when I was doing the time lapse, but look at that. The vapors have cleared up a bit. This means that it, we are now at the azeotrope. You can see here, it's at 100 or so degrees, which means that this should be the boiling point of the azeotrope, and you can see it collecting. This is great news because I actually might get a drop or two. Alright, so it's actually coming over now. You can see we have a good amount in the receiver, but there's still quite a bit, but I'm just going to stop it now because this was just a proof of concept and really not intended as a reliable way to make nitric acid. Alright, this is the moment of truth. So here, I'm going to pipette some up. And we have a 1980s penny, which means that this one will be mostly copper. So if this starts dissolving and give you off nitric, nitrogen dioxide fumes, we know we've got the right thing. Alright, is this even acidic at all? Yes it is. Alright, now I will pour all the rest of my acid onto this one copper penny. And if it actually dissolves, we will know that it is real nitric acid. Please work.
All right, it's been a whole 24 hours, and look at this. It's actually turned blue. You can see the penny is really, really not dissolved at all. However, I will take it. It's blue, and it proves that copper nitrate has been formed, and thus nitric acid is present, because sulfuric acid doesn't dissolve copper. It's funny how now I wanted it to turn blue, but at the beginning, I was trying to avoid the blue chunk of the fertilizer. But, uh, you know, that's just chemistry. A huge thanks goes out to everyone who's watched to the end, and please make sure to like and subscribe, but only if you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.